Welcome back to New Christopher Newport University poll is Governor Glenn Youngkin with record approval ratings this far into his first and only term as governor. And you may remember a couple of years ago, Governor Youngkin was one of the first Virginia gubernatorial candidates to join me on the final five. Of course, his appearance on the show propelled him to the governorship. Today, we talked about what's next for him and for Virginia voters. Governor, thanks for joining us tonight. Great to be with you. Let's uh, first of all talk about why you've been making the rounds. We have election day just a couple of weeks away. You've been doing something that, that not many Republicans have jumped on board with, but you were full throttle in favor of early voting this time around, and the numbers have showed Republicans are responding to it. Yeah, well, let's be clear. Uh, the, the winner is decided by who gets the most votes, and we have an early voting period, and I want to take full advantage of it. And so we jumped out early to encourage people to go vote, sign up for absentee ballots, uh, make a plan to go to a, to the early voting locations. We have a website called secureyourvotevirginia.com. We've invited people to come and make a plan to vote early. You know, at the end of the day, uh, there were 500,000 Virginians who voted for Jason Meares, Winston Sears, and me in 2021 that didn't come back and vote in 2022 in the congressional midterms. That's a lot of votes left on the sidelines. And so we're doing everything we can to get people out to vote because if Republicans don't show up, we're not going to win. And I think we've got a great great record to describe to people. We'll put our record on the table of job growth and empowering parents and working for schools and making sure that neighborhoods are safe. And we want more friends in Richmond to help us do even more. So here we go. Uh, with, with Election Day comes the entire House of Delegates, the entire Senate. You know, these are elections that up until a couple of years ago, voters didn't necessarily pay close attention to. Now, not just voters are paying attention to it. We are seeing the national parties pay attention to Virginia because there aren't many other states that have these races on the ballot this time around. Yeah, there's not many states at all uh, that have it on the ballot, and I think we're doing it differently. I think back in 2021, we caught a lot of people's attention because I don't think most people expected me to win. Uh, and I think we ran a, a really good campaign, but I also think that we've delivered extraordinary results in the last two years. And so this is a chance for us to put our results on the table and, again, show that we're doing things a little differently, like running a very concentrated early voting and absentee ballot program. Again, doing something that Republicans have historically haven't done, but this is how we're going to win, and I think it's going to be a meaningful part of all elections going forward. What was one thing that you campaigned on two years ago that now you look and you say, we've accomplished that, now we want to grow upon that? Well, first of all, we, we know that Virginians have been overtaxed, and so I told Virginians that I would deliver $5 billion of tax relief, and through two budget cycles, we've delivered $5 billion of tax relief. That's $2,200 for the typical Virginia family, and if you're in the military, if you're retired, it's $4,500 because we now, up to $40,000, exclude your retirement benefits from being taxed at all in the Commonwealth of Virginia because we want our vets here. I don't want them moving away. And so that was a really important campaign promise. But I also promised to back the blue, and we've had record investment in, in law enforcement. I promised that we were going to raise expectations in, in education, and we are raising our standards. We're raising the ceiling and the floor. I promised we'd go to work to make sure the government runs more efficiently. And we have. The first year, we found $1.2 billion that have been appropriated that didn't need to be spent. In this past year, another $1.6 billion have been appropriated that didn't need to be spent. So I feel like we've done a really good job of keeping our promises, but that allows us to have bigger aspirations to do even more. And that's why at, on, on November the 7th, I hope everybody gets out and votes. I'd ask everybody to send a team to Richmond that can work with me as opposed to against me, and we can get Virginia moving even faster. So one of the big issues, obviously, that you would certainly not argue that propelled you to the governorship was the idea of, of parental rights, and we saw that play out in Loudoun County. We saw what was happening there. It still continues to play out in many different ways, shapes, and forms. Uh, is that is that issue one you believe that this new crop of legislators should take to, to Richmond? Should you should they win the majority in the House, and should they hold on to the Senate? Well, absolutely, or and vice I think versa. and I think that it is. I think that is, is this is a, a moment for us to just again reaffirm the realities that in Virginia, parents have a fundamental right. It's in our code to make decisions with regards to their children's education, their care, and their upbringing. And we're going to protect those rights. But what that means is that you now have a team around every child, yes, trusted teachers or a trusted administrator, but with parents at the head of the table making the ultimate decision with that child. And that's so important for us to continue to empower parents to do that. 
What we also know is that when there is a great relationship between a parent and their child, children do better. And so we just want to make sure we foster that. I think education will continue to be a top issue forever. Why? Because educating our children is the key to the future. And if they have an excellent education that unlocks opportunities, then one, families will want to be here, but there will be a great future for our kids. And given the job growth that we have in Virginia today, with over 230,000 more jobs today than just 22 months ago and a record labor participation, we need these folks to have a, a great education to come into this workforce and take advantage of these great opportunities. What I've seen so far are the Democrats that are running for these for these state races, they are framing the issue around abortion, abortion rights. You've gone on the record saying you f think 15 weeks would be a, a reasonable, logical uh, midway point here. There are some that don't believe that's far enough. So how much is abortion going to play into some of these votes in some of these uh, some of these races do you believe coming up? Well, I've tried to be very clear that uh, I am going to support one bill, only one bill, to protect life at 15 weeks when a child can feel pain, with full exceptions in the case of rape or incest when the mother's life is at risk. That's the bill that I'll support. And I think that what the other side has tried to do is scare voters into thinking that we're going to do something else. Well, it's just not true. And they're trying to really sell fear, and we're trying to sell answers and hope. And I think that's what's on the ballot. Do we want to look forward and talk about job growth and great education and safer communities and a better health system that works to, to meet people where they are and their mental health needs that we can overhaul and do together in a more efficient government? Or do we want to sell fear? And I've been really clear what I expect for us to do. We will back a bill to protect life at 15 weeks when a child can feel pain with exceptions for rape, incest, and a mother's life is at risk. And, and they don't want any limits. And so it's either no limits or reasonable limits. And now let's start talking talking about all these other issues of job growth and education and safe communities and behavioral health that Virginia needs to get moving on and get right. So we will, of course, be the best place to live, work, and raise a family. Looking at how Virginia is right now and looking at what's happening across the river in Washington right now with the GOP, are there any lessons you think that Republicans could learn from the way that you've operated and the way that you've worked with state lawmakers here in Virginia? Well, I, I, I'm hoping it's not just Republicans. I'm hoping that all Virginians, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, Democrats or independents appreciate the fact that, one, we've been very clear about what we want to get done and why. Why we think that common sense, conservative governing and, and policies work. We've shared the track record results that they, in fact, translate into real results. And we've asked for their vote to, to allow us to continue to move down that path. I think this basic fundamental understanding that I work for 8.7 million Virginians. I need to explain to them what we're going to do and why we're going to do it, and then ask them for their support. And uh, we came in with, uh, I think, a surprise election, but we've only seen uh, the overall support for what we're doing grow over time. And I think this is a lesson for not just Virginians, but hopefully for Americans, that when we explain what we're going to do and why we're going to do it, and it works, then people will, in fact, support us in our next time around. I think people appreciate the fact that I believe in Virginia's future, and I believe in the opportunity for Virginians to have a great, great, great future. This is what this is why every day I come to work with a spring in my step. I feel so blessed to be doing this job, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to go work for 8.7 million Virginians. You know, there are people who say they would like to have you work for many more, many more people across this country coming up in two years. Is that still anything that's on your mind here? Well, I've, I've never gotten a promotion without doing a really good job in the one that I'm in, and I'm looking forward to holding our house and, and hopefully flipping our Senate and taking a, a General Assembly that will work with us to get so much more done to the benefit of all Virginians, and I think that's going to be an exciting Day. Governor Youngkin, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Great. Thank you.